I'm going to be speaking to you about linear models. You ever seen this one? If I had a dollar for every time algebra has helped me, I'd have X dollars, huh? Um, it has nothing to do with linear models. I just thought it was cute. Okay, so let's look at um, the equation of a straight line. What does it mean to be linear, right? Linear means a straight line. So it helps to remind ourselves, what is the equation for a straight line? And it goes like this, f of x equals m times x plus c, where, this is really important now, we have to know what everything means. m, do you remember what that is? It's the gradient, c is the y-intercept, so it's where it crosses the y-axis. So something like this, this is the general form at least of any linear model, it's some junk times x plus some other stuff in front. Uh, or at least at the end, it doesn't matter, right? It could be in opposite order, but whatever is multiplying the x, that's your gradient. Now we could do a plot of this. I could show you that. So let me just say I uh, just give myself some axes here, and I could decide. Let's see, I can make this obviously. I'll label it x and y, and maybe I have some sort of graph that looks like this, something like that, for example some sort of graph like this. Well, this right here then, just to remember, this right here is your y-intercept, right? That's this value right here, y-intercept. And your gradient, well, let's say you knew two points right here, you could go like this right here, and like this right here, this would be your delta y, let's just say this could be called a delta x. And you can say that your gradient, you know, that's your m value here, so your gradient, which is m, is equal to delta y over delta x. That's how we define a gradient. It's your rise over your run, or it's the slope. You know, it's delta y, delta x. Something like this. So just remember this. This is something we're going to be using. But we're going to be using our calculator to help us to do this. Okay, so this is this is the point. So let me give you an example. So what if we want to convert between temperature measured in Fahrenheit and in Celsius, and we're going to use this linear function. Uh, I made this meme right here. I thought it was funny. If a room's temperature changes, is it still at room temperature? <laughs> All right, so let's look at this. This is a linear function. It's defined as T equals M times F plus C, where they tell us T is the temperature in Celsius. All right, that's important to know. Okay, so this right here is in Celsius. All right, good. And F is the temperature in Fahrenheit. All right. It's another scale that people use, especially in the US, they like to use that one. Most of the rest of the world uses Celsius. And we're supposed to find some M and some C. So these are just the parameters. See the idea here? These are just these are just coefficients. These are parameters. We've got to find these. You know, this right here at least will be important, right? We probably want to find these. Because if we use these, then we have a model. See, the whole point, in fact, that's going to be near the end here, the whole point is going to be to write down this model as, you know, so, you know, T equals something times F plus uh, something. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to look for it in this form, where I'm going to be filling in whatever this is and whatever this is. That's going to be my goal. So we're told some data here. We're told that when the temperature is 72 Fahrenheit, it's 22.22 degrees Celsius. We're supposed to write down an equation that shows this information. Well, if you look at it, all we have to do is just write it in this form here. So we have 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, that's this one here. That's 72. So if that makes any sense, uh, and I have 22.22 is the degrees Celsius, that's this value. So do you see, I can make myself a little equation that goes 22.22, because that's my T value here, equals M, which I don't know, times F, which is 72. Now normally we put the number we don't know in front, so I can say 72M plus C. But do you notice, I don't know anything else about this. I'm kind of stuck now. Do you notice, I, I don't really know what to do now. So, in fact, I'm just going to keep this. Uh, so I'll maybe put this right here as an answer. So there we go. This is my solution for this first piece of information. And maybe I'll call this equation 1. So that way I'll be able to keep track of what's what. All right, now we have some more information. When the temperature is 5 degrees Fahrenheit, it's minus 15 Celsius. Write a new equation. All right, same idea. So we put in a minus 15 here for the temperature equals, let's see, it's 5 degrees Fahrenheit times M plus C. See, I have a second equation. 
All right. And by the way, uh, exam questions are often written like this. If this is your IA, you sort of have to figure out what your data points. But in an exam question, it could easily be like this. They're often set up like this, where they set up situations. They sort of hold your hand a little bit through it. Say, hence or otherwise, you know, find the temperature in Celsius that corresponds to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it really helps to have a model first. So there's a bunch of ways of doing this, okay? There's, there's tons of ways of doing it. Let me show you just uh, like one way of doing it. We could, uh, I mean, we could do it by hand. If you really wanted to, you could do it by hand. Or you could say, all right, well, I'm going to use these two equations. Because notice I have two equations with two unknowns. Because I'm trying to solve this, 22.22 equals 72m plus c. And I'm also having to work with minus 15 equals 5m plus c. You could do it by hand, sure. And you could do some magic. And you would end up with, you know, m equals something and c equals something. You could do it that way. You absolutely could. Um, I mean, you could do it because you use two equations, two unknowns. You could isolate for one. Maybe you get c by itself first. So you get c would be, you know, minus 15, minus 5m. You put that c into here, and then you'll get what m is. From then, then you go back and put in c. You could, you could do it that way. Um, I don't think it's the nicest way to do it, but, I mean, you could. I'm going to use something called or some sort of tool, I'll use uh, some sort of solver. So actually, I'll use something from my TI uh, Inspire, actually. Hold on a second, do I have it here? Yeah, there you go. I'm going to use some sort of solver here. So I'm going to use this one right here. So I could use that way. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to say calculate, then menu, algebra, and do solve a system of linear equations. On your TI-84, I you have a similar thing, I think, under PolySmult. So it's under apps, and you go to PolySmlt. But let me just show you here how I would do it on my calculator. I open up a new calculator, go to Menu, go to Algebra, and I go to Solve a System of Linear Equations. How many equations do I have? I have two. All right. What kind of variables are you using? I'll even use the proper variables. I'll use m, comma, and c. All right. I say go. Now it says to put in my equation. So, all right, so 22.22 equals uh, 72 times, don't forget the time symbol. Sometimes it'll make a mistake if you didn't do that, so it's, it's actually kind of important. I've forgotten a few times, and it got really confused, and it said it couldn't do it, so that's actually really important. So minus 15 equals 5 times m plus c. And I say do it. And notice it told me what m is. It told me m is 0.5. Five, let's just say, I mean, that's, I think, or we'll say three significant figures. We'll say five, five, six. So from that, I get the M equals approximately 0 0.556. And I have C is approximately equal to, what was it again? It was negative 17.8, let's just say. So negative 17.8. Those are the numbers that I'm going to put in here. Notice, so now I have this. So I have 0 0.556, and I guess if I really want to be careful, I shouldn't say the plus, I should say a minus here. So I'll say minus, whoops, and then it's 17.8. Uh, there we go. So this is my equation. This is this is my model. I've actually done it. So once I have my model, great, then I can actually use it to predict to solve this question. So that was the important part is to actually find a solution. So I'll write it maybe in different colors. I'll say so. So these are here my values right here that I need it. So I'll say so. Uh, and by the way, I'll say or here because we could have done it this way or this way. And I would have gotten that m is 0 0.556 here, and I would have gotten, you know, minus 17.8 here. So what do I do with this? Well, now I can use it to predict at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You see? So I go t equals 0 0.556 times 100 minus 17.8. I'll just do that on my calculator. Well, so I'll just get on my calculator and say that. So 0 0.556. Uh, in fact, it's better if you use all the decimals you can. So I'll say 55522 times uh, 100. All right, and I'll do that minus 17.7776. There we go. I end up with an answer to three significant figures. The temperature will be 37.8, let's just say. So T equals 37.8 degrees Celsius. And there is my final answer. Now I'm finally done. 
Phew. Now there was another way you could have done it. If you want to do a regression on it, I just want to show you, you could have actually done it in a more interesting way. If you wanted to, you could have done it. Uh, let me show you here. I'll do a list and spreadsheet and I'll actually call this. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could call it. I'll call it just X and Y, maybe just to make it easier. No, actually, no, I'll call it T and F, just like I did here. Call it T. Oops. And I'll call this one here. F. I just want to show you this right here as another way of doing it just because there's tons of ways of doing this. So what if I put in my data points that I knew? Do I know something for T, my temperature in Celsius? I do. I know that when it's 22.22, I know that the temperature in Fahrenheit is 72. And when I know that my temperature, my T value uh, in Celsius, I know that when it's minus 15, okay, so I'll put in minus 15 here, then I know that it's 5 Fahrenheit. So watch, I just do 5. And then what you could do easily is just go ahead and do a regression. So do menu, statistics, and say, uh, give me the linear regression, mx plus b. Uh, you have to make sure you tell it which one is the x. x was the f value. The y value is the t, because this is always x. This is always the y. And say, go ahead. Do you notice it gave me the values here? It told me M was 0.555. Hey, look at that. And this is was B. And by the way, it even told you the R value to tell you, you know, how close you were. Um, and it matched exactly. Of course, it matches exactly. There were two points. If you want to see what those points look like, you could, of course, have plotted this just to show you. I mean, this is maybe a bit dumb, but you could have done it this way. You could have said, all right, well, show me these. Right, these are F here on this axis. This one right here is T. That's on the Y axis. And there we go. And then you can say, hey, give me a regression on this, just to show you the graph. Give me a regression of a straight line. Look, it matches perfectly. Of course it does, there's only two points. But just so you know, there are lots of different ways of modeling this situation. You could have done it by hand, using a linear solver. You could, by the way, solve three equations with three unknowns if you needed to like that, right? Or you could do using linear regression like this. It doesn't matter.